In the apartment, both guns were on Harry as he walked to the kitchen. Step back, said the larger gunman. Harry froze with hands high. Check the kitchen for an emergency gun. The smaller gunman searched through the drawers, cabinets, and refrigerator. Just look behind the refrigerator and tell me what you see. He leaned over the counter on the left side of the refrigerator. I think I see a bag at the bottom. Again, both guns pointed back to Harry. Okay, get it. Harry approached the refrigerator and grabbed the two top corners and rocked the appliance, barely moving it. Harry, stalling for time, turned with a smile and said in Arabic, So, you men knew the conservative old guy would save his money, eh? Both men smirked, then grinned to each other. On the street, John and Sue sat still as the police officer questioned the man five vehicles back. When I say go, hit the store across the street and see what canned food is left. I'll check on Harry. Both watched the driver behind step out of his car, quarreling with the police officer. The argument then escalated, resulting in the driver being turned, thrown, and searched against his door. Ready? John and Sue quickly kissed and exchanged smiles. Okay, go. Both slipped out of the car unnoticed. Harry continued his show struggle with the refrigerator. After a few minutes, the gunman grew impatient with how little Harry had moved the large appliance. So how did you get it back there yourself? Asked the smaller gunman. I had a partner once. I think you know what happened to him on the road to the airport. Another smirk, raised by each of the men. Harry looked to the larger gunman and gestured to the upper right corner of the refrigerator. Pick up that corner so I can pull it. Harry grabbed the left side of the refrigerator. The larger gunman switched the pistol to his right hand, keeping the gun away from Harry as a precaution, and grabbed the right top corner with his back to the wall. Hey, check the door is shut, the larger gunman said to the smaller. As Harry and the man struggled with the refrigerator, the smaller gunman walked over to the door just as John pushed it open into his face. I'm in bad need of a shirt, Hare. John, face to face with the gunman, immediately grabbed the armed hand. The larger gunman turned his head, hearing the start of trouble. Harry swung open the freezer door, momentarily trapping the man against the wall with his hands up. Harry threw a left fist over the freezer door, crashing it on the man's face. Harry then reached behind to the skillet on the stove as the large gunman was straightening his right hand to shoot. Harry swung the pot, hitting the gun out of the thug's hand, over the refrigerator and down behind it. John and the smaller gunman exchanged knees as they struggled for the weapon. Harry and the other brawled and wrestled, both exchanging dominance. John had pushed the fight to the rear of the apartment, past the kitchen and living room, into the bedroom. Harry's fight rolled into the hallway behind John's. John pushed the man to an open window in the right corner of the room and forced the man's left hand holding the gun out the window. John removed his right hand from the man's throat and used it to shut the window, pulling his left hand out in time, but trapping the gun on the outside. John held the window down with both hands, allowing the gunman to take full swings with his free hand at the right side of his head. John tucked his head and raised his shoulder, shielding his jaw. The gunman grabbed the back of John's head and pushed it through the top pane of the window. John returned with a back elbow, knocking back the gunman, leaving the gun fall to an empty courtyard below. John followed up with big swings out the door to the living room, eventually knocking the man on his back. The larger gunman, in the meantime, pushed the fight with Harry into the bathroom. Harry struggled with the rear choke as the gunman bounced him off the walls, cracking tile and plaster. In the living room, John mounted the man's chest, continuing the beating, splitting the man's brow, punching blindly as the blood from the glass cut above his hairline filled his eyes. Lips split as John punched past, knocking out teeth. A final direct hook landing on the jaw rendered the man unconscious, allowing John to run to Harry's aid, leaving the smaller gunman a bloody mess on the floor. In the bathroom, Harry had already lost the rear choke and was being pummeled between the bathtub and toilet. Running in, John stomp-kicked the goon, who fell against Harry, breaking Harry's rib and temporarily wedging him between the two fixtures. John and the man started to brawl, giving Harry the chance to pull himself up. In a pool of blood on the living room floor, the smaller gunman slowly regained consciousness and stumbled into the kitchen, opened a drawer, and pulled a knife. 
The man turned his head to the sounds of struggle behind the partition wall. 